So, you know what's mad? There's so much included inside CapCut for you to use to create various different things that would usually take you so much longer in other video editors. There's also so many elements included inside CapCut for you to use for free that would usually cost you to, let's say, download from other websites. Today, I'm gonna go through pretty much every main button, every main setting, show you what's going on. So, strap yourself in, make sure your mug, glass, bottle, cup, or jug is full, it's time to dive inside. Okay, so when you open CapCut for the first time, you'll be taken to this window and you've got various different options here. If you've created projects before, they will appear here. You can just click on them and it will take you to that project. But uh, to create a new project and go direct to the studio, just simply press create project and bingo, here we are inside the studio. So inside the studio, you have four main panels. In the top left, you've got your elements panel. In the middle, you've got your preview window. In the top right, you've got your details panel, which also doubles up as your adjustments panel, which you'll see as we get further into the video. And at the bottom, you've got your timeline where all the magic happens. So if we go to the top left and start with our elements, make sure import and device is selected, which by default it usually is when you start a new project because we wanna import some stuff from our computer. Just press import and then locate your files. So for this example today, I'm gonna to, um, import these folders from my recent review of the Ray-Ban Meta sunglasses. So just select the folders and bam, there they are. Now you can select individual files as well. It doesn't have to be folders. So let's import this uh, bit of audio here. And yeah, it just appears there. But where you can keep things in folders because yeah, it'll just help you out later when everything is all organized. Back in the day, I never used to organize things in folders and it just was a bit of a mess, but now it's a lot easier. So yeah, if you did import um, like random files, let's say we imported a couple of random clips uh, like these two here, um, they will obviously appear in this empty space. You can drag them into folders that are already there or you can right click on the empty space and create a new folder, then right click on that and rename it and then you can just drag those files into there. And let's say we wanted this audio one in there. It's all a little bit more organized. Then just double click on a folder and it will take you to all of the media inside that folder. Uh, at the top, you've got these three options. So you can change it from a grid view to a list view, which will help in some situations, as you'll see in a minute. You can sort the media out by like name, time, duration, etc., And you can also filter the media by like video, audio, uh, image. Uh, so yeah, that helps if you have loads of audio files and you just wanted to see what's what. Right. This search bar at the top, or should we call it a smart, smart, a smart search bar at the top. This is cool. Now you're going to hear me say this quite a lot throughout this video that this is cool because it is cool. If you click on the smart search bar, you can see you've got these bubbles of faces that appear. So you know in the iPhone when you've got various different pictures of people, it like recognizes them and it like gives you bubbles of their heads. So if you click on it, then it shows you just images of them. So you don't have to sift through like your whole photo album. Well, this works the same way. So I've got obviously various different people appearing in these shots. Um, it was when I went away with the glasses. So there's just loads of random clips uh, with me and my mates. But let's say I wanted to just get clips where I've got like, I'm focusing on one person. Uh, so that person appears in all of the clips. Let's say I chose my mate Joanne, which is this bubble here. I would simply press on her face and within seconds, look how quick that was. All of the clips where Joanne appears are now filtered here. So from all of those clips that we had, we've now got 25 results. So I don't have to sift through every single clip trying to find where does she appear because it just does it so quick. And you can see she appears there, she appears there, she appears there, she appears there. She's somewhere in there, somewhere there she is there. Uh, you get the idea. So it's very, very, very quick, very, very smart, and it's gonna save you a lot of time. Now, the other way to use the smart search uh, bar at the top is you, let's say you were speaking about a certain thing in your video. So for example, in these clips, I am reviewing the sunglasses. And in some of the clips, I talk about the charging case for the sunglasses. 
So instead of me having to like go through every single one of these clips and try and remember where it is I spoke about the charging case, I can literally go to the search bar and type in charging case, hit enter, and then again, within seconds, it will bring up all of the clips where I mentioned charging case. Look at that, like that is pretty special. So again, it's gonna save so much time so I don't have to literally try and remember and watch like what clips I mentioned the charging case because yeah it's just found it so use the smart search because it's going to save you so much time um to get this stuff sent down to the timeline uh, there's various different ways of doing it and you can actually start editing your media uh, like up here before you send it down to the timeline so but let's say uh, you wanted to just send this whole clip down to the timeline you can just press the uh, blue plus button in the bottom right and it will send it straight down to the timeline you could literally drag it down to the timeline if you want but let's say you didn't want the whole clip so this is where i like changing it to list view which is what i said earlier because it gives you a bit more of a view of it so let's just choose a bit of a longer clip this is 16 seconds so to play this clip to preview it should i say just uh hit the space bar literally filming myself filming myself which is the shortcut for playing and pausing and let's say i just wanted like this middle section of the clip instead of me dragging the whole clip down to the timeline i can get the in point and drag that in and I can get the out point and drag that in as well. And then everything that's within the blue box is all that's gonna be now sent to the timeline. So again, I can press the plus button or drag it down. And yeah, there you go. So you've edited it slightly up here rather than you having to cut it down here. So again, it could save you time in that sense. Uh, the other way to start editing it slightly up here is if I get a slightly longer clip, the the durations are actually in the top right of the thing, but because it's a white sky and they're white, I can't see it that well. Right, this is nearly a minute, so we do this. Right, if you right click on one of the clips, you get a couple of options, right? Uh, one of them is rough cut. So if we press rough cut, what this is gonna do is it's going to create a script of this clip. Now within this script, you can literally then just select different sections that you want and add them to the timeline. So here we go, this is the script for this clip. So instead of me having to sit here and watch this clip and find out what bits I want, it's scripted it out so I can skim through it. And if I know, right, I just want like, for example, this sentence, I just highlight this sentence and then literally press add to timeline and it just adds it to the timeline. And then let's say I then wanted to jump back to the top and add this sentence to the timeline. Again, just highlight it and add it to timeline. So again, you see what I mean? Like we're editing it slightly up here before we are sending it down. So I don't have to sit when it's, I don't have to edit it when it's on the timeline and cut it because I'm cutting it up here. So yeah, it, it is gonna speed things up uh, in certain situations. Now you might wanna send it down to the timeline and cut it down there. Obviously that's individual preferences and that's what it's all about. But the option is there to uh, start editing it at the top if you want. Now you may have noticed when we right clicked on one of the clips, you have an option of split scene. So if I actually go and import uh, another video file. Uh, let's do this. Let's just do a cinematic sequence, right? So this is a three, three minute cinematic sequence, right? If I right click and go to split scene, you gotta let it do its thing. It does take a little while, obviously depending on the length, uh, it might be a bit longer. This is a three minute clip, it shouldn't be too long, but it's not as fast as some of the other things I've showed you so far. Essentially what this is gonna do is it's gonna split this three minute clip into various different clips based on like what it thinks is the right cut. So let's say you had, I don't know, like a five minute drone sequence and like every so often it would change, you would change location in it, it would keep cutting to different shots, you know the deal. It would, it's essentially analyzing the clip and it's splitting it up to what it thinks maybe is the best cuts. Now, sometimes it's a little bit da 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 because it splits the clips up into like one second clips, two second clips, which is just 
stupid but sometimes it can be helpful because it splits it up into like 20 second clips or 15 second clips which are obviously more usable so it's a bit hit and miss on the with the examples and tests that I've done with it you'll see what I mean in a minute and I've actually tested this video out a couple of times and and pretty much every time I've done it it's split it up differently some the first time I did it it gave me like loads of one second clips but then I did it again after and it didn't it gave me like 20 second clips and like 30 second clips so yeah I don't know but as you can see it's nearly done so let's see what it gives us there we go right oh and look at that it see what I mean it's given like one second two second one second one which is just not usable I think what it's done is it's it's highlighting that those are the cuts because to be honest with you the intro of this video it I do have quite quick cuts so I get why it's done it but yeah, further into the video, see, it's all just one second, eight seconds. So pretty much every time it recognizes a cut, it will split it. But like I said, I've tested this video quite a few times and it, and it hasn't cut it the same way. So like before, it didn't give me like loads of one second clips as the intro. It merged the intro bit into like a 15 20 second clip so it's a bit different but yeah it's there if you have a long long clip that you would want to yeah split down and let the software do it for you if you want um and and the good thing with this is it creates a new folder for it as well so it's got the video there that we imported but then it's created a new folder for it which you just yeah click into and there you've got all of your media in there uh, so yeah, so that is your media imported from your device. Now, underneath device, you can see we've got AI generated. Now, you know what I'm going to say. This is pretty cool. So if we go into AI generated now, um, what we've got is we've got this prompt box at the bottom. And essentially, you can just type in whatever you want and let it generate what it calls a sticker. Uh, it's more like a still image. It's, it's, yeah, it's not really a sticker, but I get why they call it a sticker. It's like a cartoony thing, but probably just a still image. It's not video uh, or moving, yeah, just still. So you can see I've already had some fun with it. This was my ice cream on the moon prompt. So let's do one now. Let's do uh, London at night with fireworks in the sky right so you can see underneath the prompt box you've got this adjust box if we click on that you can change the style you can change the ratio so let's say we uh, wanted just the standard 169 ratio and then at the bottom you've got steps and essentially what steps means is how much detail do you want the image to have how much detail do you want the image to have inside it how, many, how much detail do you want in the image? That's the word I was looking for, right? So it goes all the way up to 50 uh, and all the way down to one. So the lower the number, the quicker it's going to generate it. The higher the number, the longer it's going to take. Now, it doesn't take, you know, hours, but it just takes a little bit longer. So let's keep it at one so you can see. And then we're going to press generate and let it do its thing. Now, it gives you four images. So you've got the options for four to choose from four different um, pictures. Right, here we go. So four images created, just press on it and there we go. Yeah, not looking the best. That's because we've got our steps at one. So if we now increase it all the way to 50 and regenerate the images, let's see what it gives us. Oh, 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 here we go. Ah, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Wow, look at that. Yeah. That looks really good. Exactly what we asked for. Literally exactly what we asked for. Right, let's pick which one I think. I think this one's, yeah, we'll like this one. Right, so let's say you've chosen one that you like. In this case, this one. When you hover over the box, you can see you've got some options that appear. The second one in is HD. So you can see at the moment on the preview window, it's a little bit fuzzy, a little bit blurry. It's not the best quality. So if we press HD, what it's going to do is it's going to generate a HD version of that image. Now, it's not like, whoa, like it's still a little bit like, yeah, you, I mean, you'll see what I mean. It's it's not like high, 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 high quality, but it's definitely higher quality than 
the original one it gives. And again, it takes a little bit. Now, sometimes you might get a message that says uh, like server busy or too many people are using this feature, try again. If that's the case, then you'll see that there's this little retry button that comes next to it. You press on that and like nine times out of 10 when that message has come up for me, it just generates another image straight away. Like you don't have to wait. But if you do get that message, just literally try straight after. Right. So this is the original one that we've got on the preview window. If I now show you the HD one, see, it's slight difference. It is a little bit clearer. It definitely is clearer. Uh, there's there's bits of it like Big Ben that's a little bit that the face of Big Ben is a little bit not the best in this one, but the sky is a lot clearer and the fireworks are a lot sharper. So yeah, and the water is actually a lot sharper as well. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, um, yeah, AI generated, you could just have so much fun with it. And like any of this, you're just gonna need like half a day to sit here in the studio and go through all of these bits and pieces because there's just so much to go through and cover, yeah. But let's say you like this image. If you hover back over it, you've got this little download uh, button, press on that and you can save it to your computer or you can press uh, the plus button like we did with our other media and it will send it uh, eventually, there we go, to the timeline and you can yeah, use it in your project. And everything you've generated will appear here so you can use it in future projects. It saves, you can see I've had a lot of fun with them already. Cool, so under AI generated, you've got spaces. Anywhere you see an arrow next to something, it means that there's more options underneath it. So if you press on that, you can see you've got your spaces. Spaces just works the same way like any cloud-based thing would work. So you can get it to save your projects into the space, which you can then access, like, so it saves it like to the cloud, to the space. Um, but with this, if you go into CapCut and then you go into settings, you can see at the bottom here, you've got some space settings. So you can choose, if we go into the default space, you can create spaces and then choose where you want it to upload to. You can see you've got a certain limits, uh, like 10 gig, you've got one gig, like there's certain limits with it, but you can choose how you want the space to, like do you want it to auto upload or whatever and the size limit and all of that, you can mess around with it. But yeah, play around with all of that stuff. You can turn auto upload off or on if you want, but yeah, access that through CapCut and then settings. Uh, and then you've got stock materials. Again, you can see an arrow, so there's more underneath it. Um, you've got pictures and videos in this for you to use. And this is what I was saying earlier, like that this is just included. There's a lot of stuff that you'll see a pro symbol next to throughout all of the features and elements we go through. Um, but there's also so much that doesn't have a pro symbol next to it, which means it's available and free for you to use now. Um, so you could just scroll through the, yeah, through the different categories. You can search for certain things. Um, and yeah, if you like something, if you hover over it, you can see a little star press on that and it will save it to your favorites list. So that, that's there, that's all, everything you favorited, so you don't have to keep searching for it uh, later. So yeah, you've got loads of different stock materials to choose from and use. And then you've got also brand assets, which I haven't added anything to at the moment, but the option is there. So that is pretty much our elements panel. Now we do have other elements at the top, which I am gonna skip for now and come back to later. Don't worry, I'm not gonna keep saying to you throughout this video, we're gonna come back to it later. We're gonna come back to it later. I, I just wanna go through the main, like the main basic settings of all the panels before we get too deep, because obviously there's a lot that's going on in these other elements. And with the adjustment side of things, I wanna just wait until we get to that. So that's the main side of like importing stuff from your computer to like the project and then sending it down to uh, the project or doing a bit of editing up here and playing around with the AI stuff or stock materials. Right, so let's move over to the middle panel, which is your preview window. So at the top here, you can see you've got these three lines, which I like to call the burger line. Well, not the burger lines, the burger icon. If we press on that, you can show the color scopes or hide the color scopes. You can change the preview quality as well. So if your computer is lagging uh, because you've got loads of, let's say, 4K clips and your computer is just slowing down a bit, instead of having it at best quality, which is showing the full resolution of the video, you can change it to best performance, which should help with your playback. Um, you then have the option to export a still frame. So this is literally gonna export whatever it is currently showing 
uh, on the preview window. So if we went to export still frame, we can change the name. You can then change to where it's going to be exported to on your computer. You could change the resolution, the format. Do you want it to import to the project? Press export and then it will appear at the bottom over here in your elements panel. And then, yeah, you have the option to send it to the timeline or do whatever you want with. But also it has saved it to your computer where you selected it to be saved. Uh, at the bottom here, you've got your time code. So the blue number is where the marker currently is on the timeline. And you can see that changes as we move the marker. And then the white number is the current duration of your project on the timeline. Then you've got your audio meter. So if we play, Wind or snow, you can see or day. the audio meter starts to go up, um, but it's quite a small audio meter. So if you wanted it bigger just press on it and it will send it to the timeline so now Come rain or shine when you play a clip wind or you can see it a little bit better in the corner and then you've got your play pause which the shortcut for that is spacebar and then you can zoom in to the preview window as well but remember this is not scaling up the video or editing the video in any way this is literally just let, letting you zoom in so you can see what's going on. So let's say you were doing adjustments, I don't know, on your face uh, and you wanted to get a bit of a closer view. This is probably the best way to do it. So it's not editing the actual video. It's just the preview window. You can change the ratio of the canvas. Um, yeah, so if you were doing, I don't know, a TikTok video, YouTube short, 16, sorry, nine by 16 is what you're going to want. Uh, and then you can see that with that, because this is a 16 by nine video currently on the timeline, it's created these black bars uh, at the top and bottom. So if you wanted to scale this up now, uh, if you click on it, you can then, yeah, move it around like that to fill the whole screen. Um, and then you can, yeah, enlarge it to a big, massive preview to fill the screen, press escape or these arrows to bring it back down. Uh, and that's really pretty much your preview window. If we go above that to this bar at the top, now I wanna take you over to the left up here. You can see it says auto saved. So basically, as far as I can see, there is no save button. So every time you make an adjustment, so every time you like edit something, the smallest of things, it will automatically save it. Uh, so you don't have to worry about keep saving it. So let me show you. At the moment, you can see it says auto save 12, 54, 56. If I make a adjustment on the timeline, you can see it's now changed the time. So every single time you make an adjustment, it saves it automatically. So don't stress that you can't find any save button uh, because at the beginning I was like, oh, well, where's the save button? Then I realized it actually doesn't there's no there's no need to press save like there is no well you can't because there is no button you just it just does it automatically which is actually great so you don't have to keep worrying about it and if it crashes like sometimes these video editors editors do then it sometimes you're like oh oh i didn't press save i didn't press save we've all been there we've all been there but no worries because it's literally saved it for you let's go back over to the top right so here you can change the layout of the studio. So if you wanted to, let's say, detach the timeline and then move it around, you could. But for the most part, I think the layout uh, by default is, is pretty good going. Um, and then next up, you've got shortcuts. Now, like I said earlier, you're just going to need like half a day to go through all of the stuff on this studio. And if there's one thing you do within that is learn some of the shortcuts because it's going to save you time again when you're editing and you don't need to sit here and memorize every single one, but like all of the main key like controls that you're going to be using, it's, yeah, it's handy to know what the shortcut is. So it's just, yeah, speeding things up going forward. And the good thing about this is you can actually modify uh, the shortcuts as well just by clicking on it. So let's say split, we didn't want it to be B, we want it to be S. Just type in S. And if you get this message, it means that obviously there's another shortcut assigned to S. So you can override it uh, or change it again. Let's say you change loads of these shortcuts and you were like, actually, I've just made a complete mess of this. You can just reset it and it will reset all of them back to its original. And don't forget, you've got other tabs at the top as well. So yeah, just spend like, I don't know, a few minutes going through the shortcuts because trust me, it will save you time later. And then you've got the option to join the pro subscription. So like I said at the beginning, pretty much everything I'm going to go through today is literally 
literally included in the free version. You can see on this account, I'm not even subscribed to the pro version because I wanted you to see that everything I'm going through is included for free. But if you wanted to upgrade to the pro version, you can. And I think this is a really good deal uh, because there's so much of the pro stuff, like I said, that would usually cost you so much more like overall in like other platforms and websites and stuff like that. You'll see as we go along, uh, there's the pro symbol that appears next to certain features and elements and whatever. Um, that's showing you that it's obviously a pro feature. Now, you can still use the pro features and elements. You can still drag them to your timeline and use them like freely as if they weren't pro. The issue will come when you come to export your project. If you've used loads of pro features and you don't have the pro subscription, it won't let you export it till you upgrade grade to pro. So it's quite smart what they've done here because it's allowing you to use all, all of the stuff that's included in pro for you to play around with. And then when you go to export, it tells you, oh, you, we, well, don't tough. We can't export it unless you up, upgrade. So most people would then upgrade. So it gives you the option to play around with them, which yeah, is pretty cool. They knew what they were doing. So here is where you would choose uh, the pro subscription if it is that if that's what you want to do. Uh, and then next that you got share. Now, this is really cool as well. So let's say you were doing an edit for someone and you needed to quickly send it to them to preview and you just needed some comments or whatever about it. If we go to share and um, what this is going to do is it's going to literally export and share exactly what it says on the tin. It's going to create a link which you can then send to whoever you want to send it to and they can view it online through the link and yeah, leave comments, download it, whatever. So you can change the name. Uh, you can also change it uh, to save it to a space like I showed you earlier with those spaces. You can change the resolution. Uh, but to be honest with you, 720p is is probably, you don't really need to go to 480 and reduce it even more. 720 is is, is, is low enough. Um, so this isn't, you exporting it by the way, like in high quality, this is just for there, someone to like preview it quickly in like a situation like that. Um, so don't don't stress that there's like no 4K or whatever. It's just, yeah, for quick export and share. You can change the format and the frame rate, and then it tells you uh, the duration and, and the size that it will be. So if we go to export and share and let it do its thing, uh, like I said, what it's going to do is it's going to give us a link that we then can share. Right, so before you actually copy the link and share it, you can make slight adjustments to how the link is used. So if you go to this settings button, you can change the name of it. You can allow downloads or or turn downloads off or allow comments or turn comments off. And you can also password protect as well, which is pretty cool that you have these options. So we'll keep download and comments on for the moment. And you can also then change it like anyone can open the link, only members of the space can open the link, blah, blah, blah. Then if you copy the link and then we go to the browser, if I paste the link in, you can see before the link, you get this like information bit. Like if you press enter now, it won't take you to the link. So I don't know why they include this in the link uh, because this is obviously not part of the link. So make sure you delete this first bit from the link because it won't work then. And then you've just left with the link, uh, hit enter, and then it should take you to your video. Look at that. There we go. And you can just pr if play it. If you're a regular viewer to the channel, then it will... Very, very cool. And because we kept download on, you can see that the download button is available here. And because we kept comments on, you can see that you're able to leave a comment. If we had turned those off, then this would not be available here. But yeah, very, very cool for you to quickly share it to someone, like let's say they're on the other side of the world and you needed to show them the edit quickly. Export and share. And talking of export, when you're ready to export, here is the magic blue button that you will press to export. Uh, and this is going to be exporting your main project to your computer. So like pretty much any export window, you've got the normal kind of options with the name where you want it to be exported to, the resolution, uh, the bit rate, the codec, uh, the format, the frame rate. You can uh, also change the audio format. And if you have captions included uh, in your project, you can export them as like a text file as well. But you can see that that is a pro feature. So you see next to that it says pro. So that means that we wouldn't be able to do that 
like I said, unless we were subscribed to the pro feature. But yeah, this is your export window when you are ready to go. Right, so let's move over to the details panel, which is this panel in the top right. And like I said earlier, this doubles up as your adjustments panel as well, which you'll see as we get further into the video. Uh, but yeah, this is just showing you the details of your project. But the main thing we're going to focus on on this panel is this button down here, modify. Click on that and you'll be taken to this window. Here you can change the name of your project, see where it's saved to. You can change the imported material to copy to project, stay in its original location, change the aspect ratio, change the resolution, change the frame rate and mess around with the color space. The main button we're going to focus on here is this, arrange layers. Now you're going to want to turn arrange layers on and keep it on. And here's why. Every time you send a different element down to the timeline, it creates a new layer. And there'll be certain situations that you'll want to rearrange the layers to, let's say, create different effects. And if this is turned off, you won't be able to rearrange the layers. So let's keep it off for now. Let me go up to our text element and send a text layer down. You can see it's created a new layer. If we go over to effects and send an effect, down, you can see it's created a new layer. These are our layers. So let's delete the effect for now and keep the text down here. Uh, and I'm going to show you an example of why we would want to turn the arrange layers on. So with this text, let's just literally change the text to something better than that. Ah, there we go. Uh, let's increase the size so we can see it. In fact, let's change the color. Um, and maybe we should add like a stroke to it. There we go. So it's a bit more in your face. Perfect. That looks better. So for this example, I want to get this text behind me, right? So at the moment it's in front of me. Now, the thing you need to remember with layers is everything, all layers that are at the top will take priority. So at the moment, this text layer is above the video layer. So it's taking priority, meaning that it's in front of the video layer so it's always going to be in front so if i wanted to create a text behind me effect i would need to create another layer of me and then do some adjustments so yeah this is pretty cool you're getting a tutorial of how to put text behind a person inside a tutorial video so here we go this i'm going to do this very very quick um we're going to copy and paste the layer of me so there's two of them and for this effect to work, I need to put this text layer in the middle of the two layers of me. So if I get the text layer and I drag it in the middle, ah, oh dear, we have a problem. The problem is we can't move the text layer around. Why can't we? Because we don't have arrange layers turned on. So if we go back to modify, which by the way, you can see that this panel has now changed to the adjustments panel. So the modify button is no longer there. It's because we've got a layer selected. If you simply just press in any empty space at the end uh, of it and click off of your layer that is selected, the details panel will reappear. And there is our modify button. If we turn arrange layers on now, you can see that once you turn it on, you can't turn it off uh inside this project which like i said you wouldn't really want to turn it off um, once it's on so if we keep it on and press save now if i go back over to the text layer and i try and move it in between ah bingo there we go we're able to rearrange the layers because we've turned arrange layers on but obviously we can't see the text anymore because now the layer of me is at the top and like I said, any layer that's at the top takes priority. Well, to do this effect, to create this effect, we need to click on the layer at the top and we're going to go over to our adjustments panel up here and we're going to go on video and the second tab along remove background. If we scroll down to the bottom and we go to auto removal, let it do its thing. You can see it's processing there. It doesn't take too long. The longer the clip, the longer it takes, but it's not going to take too long. And you'll see in three, two, one, bingo. Look at that. Oh yes. James behind James. Look at that. It was as quick as that, but we wouldn't have been able to do that if arrange layers was turned off. 
And if I move the layout to the top, you can see it's taking priority and it's now in front of me. And what's actually happened there, what's actually happened there is we've removed the background from the top clip. So there's actually two of me here. If I hide the bottom track, you can see that it's just a black background. This clip of me at the top is just me on a black background because we've removed the background. But to obviously make it look like the effect that we want, where it's just literally behind me normally and not like this, we need two layers. And one of the layers, which is the layer at the bottom, needs to be the normal layer, which has the background in it, which is what creates this text behind me, like layer. Wind effects. or snow. Night. There you go. It looks pretty cool. Now, if you don't want to go in to modify every single time uh, you create a new project and turn on Arrange Layers, then you can simply go up to CapCut, go to Settings, and you can see if you go to Edit, the second tab along, you've got this Arrange Layers option. If you tick that and press Save, every time you create a new project, it will simply be turned on. So you won't have to keep turning it on, which again is going to save you time. And yeah, you're going to want you to create certain effects. You're going to need to arrange the layers. And if you have it turned off, you won't be able to. Are you still with me? Good. I hope you are. Right. So that is arrange layers. Uh, if we go back to modify, there's one more thing we need to cover, which is the second tab along performance. Um, proxy. So if your computer is lagging still, even if you've changed it to like best quality and you're still getting issues with the playback, then if you turn proxy on, it will just simply convert all of the stuff to 720 or 540. Like I said earlier, 720 is going to be probably enough. But if you still have issues, you can go down to 540. This is simply just going to convert it to this for preview purposes and editing purposes. It's not going to adjust the actual footage. So don't worry if it's 4K uh, it's not going to, you're not converting it to 720, it's still 4K. It's just if your computer is not being able to handle all of the clips, you just turn proxy on and proxy editing will speed up the process. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, it was a big motorbike that went past. Anyway, proxy editing. Uh, yeah, speed up if your computer is lagging, turn it on. Right, so it's now time to move down to the timeline where all of the magic happens. And yeah, we're gonna start literally from the top left and work our way around and go through all of the buttons. So when you're on the timeline, make sure you've got a clip selected because as you can see, when you do, you get more icons appear. When a clip is not selected, some of the icons go away. So we'll make sure that's selected for this. And then over on the top left, you've got the option to change the mouse. So throughout this whole video so far, it's literally been on select, which yeah, lets you select whatever. Uh, underneath that, you've got split, which uh, gives you this razor tool. So you can literally split the clip into different clips. So this one clip has now become various different clips. Uh, underneath that, you've got left, select leftward and select rightward. And I'm not gonna lie, this is the first time I've ever heard of leftward and rightward. I've heard of forward and backward. And I've heard of left and right, obviously. I've never heard left wood and right wood. But there's a first for everything, and this was a first for me. So we're going to select, select left wood. Uh, but for this, let's just uh, split up this clip again into just different clips. And if we go to select left wood, you can see these two arrows pointing left with this yellow line appears. So wherever we press down, it will select everything to the left of that. And then you can do whatever you want with, move them around all in one or delete them all in one. And then you know what's going to happen if we select, le select left, no, select rightward. It's going to do the same and select everything that you select rightward to the arrows. Yeah. But as you can see, you've got shortcuts next to them. So like I said earlier, it's good to remember them because select and split, you're going to be using quite a lot. So it's, I think it's pretty easy to remember A and B. Uh, so yeah, that will help you out. Next to that, you've got uh, undo, you've got redo. And then next to that, you've got split again. Oh, whoa, split again. Yeah, it works the same, but slightly different. So if we, if we literally press split, what's going to happen is wherever the white marker is on the timeline, it's going to split it 
exactly there. See? So at the moment, the white marker is there. It's going to split it literally there. You can see when we hover over split, though, you've got the split shortcut, which is different to this because remember, this is the razor tool, which is B as the shortcut. For this shortcut, it's Command B. This is on a Mac, remember, by the way. Um, so the thing to remember with this is uh, if you, let's say, had your mouse here, right, which has created this yellow line, and you've still got your white line, which is the marker on your timeline, and you just left the mouse there and you decided you wanted to cut it where the white line is, by using the command, which is command B. If I do that now, you can see what it does is it actually splits the clip where the yellow line is. So the yellow line always takes priority if it's on the timeline. So if you're trying to split the clip where the white line is, then you need to make sure that your cursor is not on the timeline and it's off the timeline. So let's say we move our white marker to there and we wanted to split it where the white marker is, we need to take our cursor off of the timeline. And now when we press the shortcut command B and we split it, it will split it where the white line is. See what I mean? So that's if you're using the shortcut. If you're not using the shortcut and you're just pressing the button, then obviously this yellow line is not going to appear anyway because your mouse is going to be up here. It will just split it wherever it is. Just So just be careful, obviously, with that. Next to that, you've got delete left. So yeah, it's going to delete uh, whatever you've got to the left. And then you've got delete right. So it's going to delete whatever you've got to the right. And then next to that, you've got delete. So whatever is selected will be deleted. Uh, and then next to that, you've got freeze. So this essentially works the same way as the export frame that we did earlier. Apart from this doesn't save the frame to your computer or add it to the media. Up here, it will literally just add it to your timeline. So if we freeze it, see see what I mean? It's just added it to the timeline as a frozen shot, which, yeah, you can then do whatever you want with, like trim it down or whatever. Uh, and then next to freeze, you've got the option to reverse the clip. But remember, when you reverse the clip, it reverses the audio and the video. So if we, for example, let's send another clip. Oh, that's a bit long. Let's send another clip down that's maybe not so long uh this section here and we reverse the clip let it do its thing again the longer the clip the longer it's going to take right so now when we play this clip back it's probably going to sound a little bit weird uh when i should what on this uh yeah so i uh yeah so just remember it's reversing the audio as well uh yeah. Next to freeze, you've got mirror. So if you wanted to mirror the image, here you go. Remember, if you do use this, although it does look great to our eye because it's exactly like it is in a mirror, it does like the text is the wrong way around and things will be on the other side, which I've made that mistake in other videos, which we won't go into now. But yeah, just remember, use the mirror tool carefully. Uh, and then you've got the option to rotate the clip and then you've got the option to crop as well. So you can, let's say, crop in to this bit here, confirm that, but it will crop in and obviously it's not cropping the canvas in, it's only cropping the clip in. So it will create these black bars, which there is a way to get rid of this and have something behind it, like a solid color or pattern or whatever, which you'll see when we get further into the video. But yeah, just remember the crop, you're not cropping the canvas, you're cropping the video. So it will appear like this unless you, I guess, scale it out, which remember the more you scale in, scale out, zoom in, it's going to lose quality. So just, yeah, be careful of that. And then last along, you've got transcript base editing. So let's delete all of this mess on the timeline and let's send uh, this clip down. Uh, so yeah, transcript base editing. What this is going to do is it's going to create a transcript of from the audio. Obviously, this is a very short clip. But what you can do with this is essentially if you had, let's say, a 10 minute clip, uh, you could then again skim through the transcript and say, actually, I don't want that sentence or sentence. 
I don't want that sentence. I don't want that sentence. And just highlight them and then delete it like that. So for example, let's say we didn't want this middle bit. Highlight it. You can see it's highlighted on the actual timeline in that white box. And you can just simply press delete and look, it deletes it off. So this is going to be really handy. Like I said, if you have a longer clip and you don't want to sit there listening to the whole thing, but you know that there's certain paragraphs in it that you don't want, you can just scan through and delete them like this. Now, at the top here, you've got remove filler words. Now, up until a few days ago, this was a free feature. It allowed me to use it. And now all of a sudden it's changed to a pro feature. So I can't use it because obviously we're focusing on the free stuff and I haven't subscribed to the pro uh, version on this account. So yeah, what this is going to do though, if you are lucky enough to have it as a free version, because it was, I'm not going mad, it was a free feature when I first started using CapCut. And I don't know, maybe it was like a thing where you have like 10 tries and then, you know, it says no more unless you upgrade. I don't know. It didn't say that though. So that's why I was shocked when it suddenly said pro. Let me know down below, is yours a pro feature or free feature? Because mine was and now is pro. But anyway, if you had loads of like bits in the clip where you were like, um, ah, uh, ooh, ooh, like that. It would recognize those noises. They're noises, aren't they? Not words, noises. Uh, and it would say, right, there's six of these noises and it would show you where they are. And you have the option to just delete them all in once. And the other thing is it will highlight silences. So you know how it is when you record something like you might do like a, one section of it, then you pause for a couple of seconds and you do another section or whatever. It highlights those uh, pauses. And again, you can delete them all in once. So there's so much time I spend usually going through and deleting the the empty spaces and now you don't have to because you can just do it all in one but like I said I can't show you because it's a pro feature but it was free when I started using it so yeah there you go transcript break blah, transcript based editing cool let's move over to the top right and you have the option to do a voice over over the clip on the timeline you can change the uh input device if you've got an external mic plugged in you can change the volume you can reduce the echo uh, and then mute projects at the moment we've got it uh, not selected if i press record a pair of ray-bans that it's have gonna a camera play inside of them. whatever no, is on the timeline which is probably not going to be what you want because it's just going to be a bit of a mess so if you mute project you can then go to record and you can see that it's muted whatever is playing on the timeline so you don't have it obviously in the background uh and yeah a pro feature is to enhance the voice but yeah you've got the option to do a voiceover right next along you've got magnet and then after that you've got snapping now these basically work the same way but slightly different so both of them are on at the moment Let's say we get another clip or, uh, from the media at the top and we drag it down to the timeline and let's say we let go of it here. Ah, bingo, look what it's done. It's literally magneted it. Magneted it? Mag it's literally magnet. It's magnet. No, it's stuck it. It's stuck it to the clip to the left. Look at that. Because we've got magnet turned on. Now, this is going to be uh, handy to have on sometimes and it's also going to be annoying to have on sometimes which is why you get the option to turn it on or off so it's going to be personal preference do you want it on do you want it off your choice but that's what it does wherever you let go of the clip it will just yeah stick it not magnet not magnet it that's not a word is it magnet it just stick it to the clip obviously to the left if i now delete the clip and turn magnet off well we let go of the clip here and it hasn't stuck it to the clip to the left it's left a big gap so in certain situations you might want it to do that like i said in certain situations it's handy to have one so it just straight away sticks to the clip to the left right next up you've got snapping now if we bring the clip down again and we let go of it like we just did obviously it stays in place there if we slowly move it to the clip to the left you can see as we get a bit closer oh oh it snapped into place look at that I, I just literally, I'm just, I stop it there. That's not me doing it. It snapped it. See, it's created that blue line. That's it snapping into place, right? Uh, if we turn snapping off and we now move the clip closer to the other clip, you can see that it doesn't snap into place and the blue line in the middle disappears. Um, yeah, so I actually personally think this feature is handy to have on all the time. Uh, well, most of the time, should I say. Um because if you 
let's say drop it down manually there and then you was to play it, it's created a small little gap, which it wouldn't have if snapping was on. And again, there might be times where you want a gap because you might want to fit it with something else or you want it to be a gap. Uh, and again, that's why you have the option to turn it on off. But snapping, I found, is more handier to have on than the magnet. Um, so yeah, you don't have any gaps. But yeah, that's what snapping and magnet does. Next along, you've got linkage. So let's send a text layer down again. Uh, let's send it to this clip. Let's delete these voiceovers that we just did. Uh, so we've got our text layer here above our video layer. So at the moment, linkage is turned on. So let's say I wanted to move this clip to the end of the timeline. As you can see, I've got the clip selected, but I haven't got the text layer selected. And let's say I go to move the clip. Oh, oh. Look, the layer above it is moving with the clip. That's because we've got linkage turned on. If we turn linkage off and we now go to move the clip, the text layer stays exactly where it is and yeah, the clip moves on its own. So again, this will be handy to have on in certain situations, but in certain situations, it will be handy to have off if you don't want all of the layers above it to move because it's not just the text layer. Again, if we had an effect layer above the text layer, let's do the fairy wand again uh, above the clip and we turn linkage on and we select the clip. See, even the effects layer moves with it as well. So it's the layers that are above it move with it. Uh, yeah, so linkage. Then next that you've got preview. So you probably noticed throughout this whole video so far because preview has been on. Every time I move my mouse on the timeline, it scrubs through the preview wherever the mouse is on the timeline in the preview window. And wherever I move my mouse up here in the previewing and the import uh, videos, it scrubs through as well. That's because preview is turned on. If I turn preview off and I now move my mouse around, ah, you can see things have just frozen where the marker is. Now, I would personally like it if you had the option to like turn previewing on when you scrub through on the preview boxes up here versus the timeline because I find it annoying to have it on on the timeline when you're moving your mouse around but I find it handy to have on like when you're scrubbing through up here but yeah it's linked you just can't it's either on or off for both not one or the other um now with it off uh, wherever the marker is on the timeline is what is going to be shown in the preview window, as you can see, and wherever you move your mouse, it doesn't move it. And then up here in the preview boxes, it doesn't scrub through, like I said, but then to play a, the clip as on the preview window, just press on it. If you're just tuning in, no, and it will play not. it. And then just either press space bar or click on it again, and it will stop playing. Uh, yeah, so like I said, slightly annoying because you can't change both of, you can't like, turn one of them off it's linked to both but yeah uh, next up you've got the option to zoom into the timeline so let's say you zoomed in uh, and then you wanted to zoom out to see everything that's on the timeline just press the button next to it and it will show you everything that's on the timeline cool and then if we go down to the actual layers you can see we've got uh the symbol uh to the to the far left is essentially showing you what the layer is so that's the effects layer that's the text layer that's our uh, video layer now you can't mix layers together so if you sent that so for example this 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 effect layer we couldn't put on the text layer every different element has its own layer you can mix the same elements on layers so if we set if let's say we went to effects and we sent another effect down it will yeah it goes on the same layer sometimes it creates a new effects layer but you could then drag it down to the same effect layer so you've just got one layer for effects one layer for text or whatever but if you were layering layers like we said earlier then yeah you might want to have layers above layers if you want it to appear at the same time, for example. Um, and then you've got the option to lock a track. You've got the option to hide a track uh, and you've got the option to mute a track if there's audio on that track. And then this little pencil is where you can create a cover or a thumbnail, if you like, for the video. So if we click on that, what's gonna happen is you can select a still frame from the video on the timeline or you can upload a picture from your computer. So let's say we chose ah, this shot of me. Uh, yeah, let's well, just do that. You can go to edit. You've then got various different templates that appear for you to, uh, yeah, 
make adjustments to. So let's change this to James Vlog, not Iceland Vlog. Uh, yeah, you can change the font, change the size, like, yeah, the color, you know the deal. You've got all of the different options and adjustments to make on it. And then once you press complete, you'll see that your cover appears there. Now, where is the cover? How do you access the cover? Well, if you go to your magic export button at the top, you can see now we've created a cover. We've got a new option that appears, which is add video cover at the beginning, uh, which essentially is going to do what it says, add the video cover at the beginning. But also when you go to export, it will export the still image of your cover. Uh, so you then can use that as a thumbnail for your YouTube video if that's what you want to do. So yeah, now you've created the cover, it will export when you go to export the video. Cool. If we move over to the actual uh, video clip on the timeline, to trim a video down or to trim a layer down, it works the same way. You're just going to get your out point, get your in point, and then trim it down to wherever it is you want. If you right click on the clip, you get various different options that appear, your normal cut, copy, delete, etc. cetera. Um, but if you want to, let's say for example, on this clip, you wanted the audio from this clip because you wanted to use it somewhere else on the timeline, but obviously you didn't want the video, you can right click and go to extract audio and then it will literally extract the audio from the clip and they're now two separate layers and you can move the audio wherever it is you want on the timeline and it's now detached obviously from the clip. But let's say you moved it along and then you changed your mind and you deleted it. Well, when you go to play this clip now, it's silent, it's muted, there's no audio to it. But if you right click on it, you can recover the audio and look, the audio appears there. Now the waves are very, very tiny. I would like them a little bit bigger, but they are just about there. And you can see when you hover over the waves, you get these two arrows up and down. That is an allowing you to uh, increase the volume or decrease the volume. And you can see the higher we go, it creates these orange bars at the top. That's showing you that it's peaking. So you don't really want any orange showing. Um, so just keep it, yeah, a bit well, just keep it so it doesn't show orange. Uh, and then you can see that you've got these like circles that appear here. This is to fade out and then this is to fade in as well. If we right click again, you've got a couple of other options as well. So let's say for example, this text layer and this effect layer and this uh, clip, this video layer, we wanted to create it as one layer. We can highlight them and then we go to right click and we can go to create compound clip. And now what's happened is all of the layers have merged into one layer. So you can see the text is there and the effect is there. It essentially sent the uh, layers down to the video layer. So you don't have individual layers, but remember any edits you do on the video layer will now affect the, uh, you know, let's say you change the coloring of the video layer, it's gonna do the same with everything else that you've merged together. So just be careful with that, but you have the option to obviously do that. Let's say though, you wanted to uh, view the audio waves a bit bigger because like I said, they are a little bit small. You could do the same thing that we just did with extracting the audio, but because these are two separate layers, if we was to trim down the video clip at the top, you can see it doesn't trim down the audio, which means things might be out of time. If we select them both and right click, you can go to group. So now you can see it's combo A, combo A. So these are now grouped together. If you then trim the top, you can see it trims the bottom as well. So it's now grouped it together as one layer, but they're obviously two separate layers. So you can see the audio layer may be a bit more clear if that's what you wanted to do, because there are some times where I edit like by looking visually at the audio layers to see like where the gaps are and stuff like that, which is very hard to do on the normal like waves up here because it's a little bit smaller, but it's a bit easier obviously with with this. Uh, let's revert it back and merge it back together as that. You've then got the option to mess around with the range. 
uh, with this marker up here. So it's choosing, you know, so let's say we had it there at about 28 seconds and we uh, obviously go to export. This is now going to only export the range that we've selected there on the timeline uh, versus the whole timeline. If I cancel that out, uh, and no range is selected and I go to export, then you can see it's gone up to the whole timeline as well. So yeah, you can mess around with adjusting the range. You can also, yeah, do some stuff with the voice, but that's a pro feature as well. And then the transcript best, blah, transcript based editing and other stuff that we uh, looked at with the split scene and stuff is basically the same uh, as what I showed you earlier with the transcript based editing here. And when I split when I split it, when I split it, when I split my cinematic video up earlier and it gave me various different clips, you can do that on the timeline there as well by just, yeah, right clicking. Right, so it's time to move over to the adjustments panel in the top right. Like I said earlier, the details panel doubles up as the adjustments panel. Right now, it's still the details panel. To convert it to the adjustments panel, just click on the layer you want to adjust. So we're gonna start with the video layer. Um, each layer, each different element, should I say, which you'll see when we add different elements, when we go through the elements in a minute, gives you different adjustment options. Uh, but yeah, we're going to start with the main layer, which is video layer. And as you can see, various different tabs and sub tabs to adjust. So literally, let's start from the top left and work our way down and across. So video and basic, this is just your basic adjustment. So you can change the scaling of the clip, the positioning, the rotation, the alignment, uh, the blend mode. Remember, wherever you see a arrow, that means there's stuff underneath it because sometimes it won't always be shown. So click on that to bring up more options. Um, you can mess around with the stabilization. If things are looking a little bit wobbly, then here you go. Uh, a lot of this is pro features, as you can see. Uh, we're going to skip that, like I said, focus on the free stuff. But you can see if you subscribe to the pro version, yeah, you just got loads and loads of stuff to mess around with. Um, if you were doing a hyperlapse video, you can add some motion blur here, uh, which will be pretty cool. And then the last option is canvas. So this is what I touched on earlier with the kind of black bars at the top and bottom of, let's say, if we had our clip our canvas, sorry, as a nine by 16 for a TikTok video. At the moment, you've got, yeah, black bars there, which don't look the best. So let's say you wanted to keep this clip as a 16 by nine clip on a nine by 16 canvas and you didn't want to scale it in to fit the screen, but you didn't want the black bars there. Well, if you get, go, uh, if you go down to canvas, you have the option to add a blur to the background. So you've probably seen this effect on quite a few videos online because it's quite a common one to use. But essentially, it's just going to add the same video that is here just behind it, but blurred. And you can obviously change how much you want it to be blurred. Uh, or you can change it to a solid color. So if you didn't want it black, but you still wanted it a solid color, I don't know, pink, then you could have it pink if you want. Uh, you can also change it to a pattern. Uh, and a lot of these are pro. So let's choose one that's not, I don't know, this sparkle. Yeah, that looks good. And yeah, so this is just changing the background of the canvas. And this works the same way if it was a 16 by nine canvas. And let's say you had the clip like in the middle like that and you wanted like a border this would just work the same way as that as well and you can also add brand backgrounds as well and that's your basic tab so then we go over to remove background which obviously i did show you a little bit earlier when we removed the background to create the text behind me effect but we didn't touch on this which is chroma key so essentially if you're uh, filming in front of a green screen and you obviously want to remove the green screen to put a background behind you this is how you're going to do it. So I don't have a clip of a green screen clip of me. Uh, so let's go to our stock material and there is a green screen category. Let's get the subscribe button and send it down. So at the moment you can see that, yeah, it's just a subscribe button in front of a green screen and it's hiding me. But let's say we just wanted the button. Make sure that that clip is selected. Go to chroma key and then go to color picker, select the green and then change the intensity. And then you can see that the green disappears. And now it's just simply the play, well, not the play button. Well, it is the play button. The play subscribe YouTube button. Uh, so yeah, the same would work if it was you in front of a green screen, uh, it would, yeah, make the green disappear and then whatever's behind it, sorry, whatever's underneath it in terms of the layers will appear behind you. So let's delete that for now and go back to our main video clip. 
Uh, custom removal. This is obviously pro features, but this is like brushes and erasers. But then we've got auto removal, which is what I used earlier. And it does a really good job, as you saw earlier. Sometimes it's not perfect. It depends on the clip and, and how much you have going on. So, for example, if I tried to do the auto removal with, let's say, the clip of me like this with the microphone in front of me, it does struggle when things are like in the way and stuff. But if it's just literally a clip of me like this currently on the screen, if I go to auto removal again, it does a pretty good good job uh, at removing the background, even when it's not a solid background. As you can see, there's a lot going on in the background there. Uh, and yeah, it still does its thing. But remember, it can only do this on humans. So you can't do it like on, I don't know, other things like animals or products or whatever it is. It does it only on humans. Once it's done its thing, you have a couple of different options. If you wanted to add like a stroke around you, uh, you can then customize that and change the color if you want. You can, yeah, just add this dotted one if you want. Uh, and then like a lot of these adjustments, it doesn't just stop with the adjustment. You can adjust the adjustment. So you can change the size, the spacing, and yeah, just have some fun with it. But auto removal, really cool that it's a free feature and it does a really good job at cutting you out if you wanted to create effects like I did earlier or literally not have the background that you have shot in as the background and a sparkle background like this. Let's move on to the next tab along, which is mask. In fact, maybe we should, uh, yeah, put it back to normal uh, for this. So let's go to mask. Let's say you wanted a cutout of your face in a heart. Well, here's how you'll do it. Um, and you can change the position and rotation and the feathering of this as well. If you thought that it was a little bit too like sharp with the edges, yeah, you can change the feathering. If you didn't want a heart and you wanted a star or a circle, here is how you'll do that. And then the next tab along is your retouch. So let's say you've had a heavy weekend, you've been out all weekend and it's, yeah, just been very heavy and you've shooted a video on a Monday and you're just not looking the best because you've had a heavy weekend. Well, here's how you can sort that out and retouch yourself up to make it look like you haven't had a heavy weekend. Um... A lot of this is pro, but there are some good stuff that you can use for free. So you can smoothen out the skin. You can see it's it's created this like box around the face as it's like highlighted that that's the face. It's recognized that that's the face. So you can smooth out the skin if you want. You can brighten up the face if you want. Although I don't think we need any more brightening because it was such a white day here that, yeah, things were already quite bright. Um, let's skip all the pro stuff. You can go to shape, reshape. So you can make your face slimmer, make it bigger, uh, mess around with the nose width. <laughs> it's all pretty mad, isn't it? It's just crazy. The mouth, make it smaller. Yeah, what about if I make it bigger? There we go. Uh, oh, and you can add some makeup. Uh, lipstick. Let's go for blue. There we go. It's great. Oh, we've got more. There's an arrow. Oh, no, no more. Uh, body. I don't think my body appears in this apart from the shoulders. That's a pro feature. I wonder if we change body. Oh, we can see it slightly. Oh, it brings it in a bit. Head. Yeah, there you go. So if you've had a heavy weekend, retouch is what you're going to want to use. But yeah, be careful because it might actually make you look like you've had a heavier weekend than you did previously by retouching it up there. Right, next tab along, let's turn this off. Oh, it's still still on, oh, because we've got, you know what, let's keep it on, keep it on. Right, next tab along, audio. So we start with basic, change the basic stuff like volume, fade in and fade out works the same way as I showed you earlier on the actual clip with those circles either side. You can normalize the loudness if you wanted to. Uh, enhance voice as a pro feature, reduce noise, um, isolate the voice and mess around with the channels. Next tab along is where it gets cool and fun. Voice changer so here you can literally like you would add filters to your face you can add filters to your voice so if you wanted it to sound more sweet oh and there's an ai voice assistant which at the moment there you go and like with anything a slider appears so you can change the strength of that if you wanted it low oh and there's an ai voice assistant which at the moment i have turned off because it's just not good yeah 
yeah, like you see, there's so many here to mess around with. Uh, but remember, if you then go over to the next tab, which is voice characters, it's going to change your voice to a completely different character. You need to turn the previous filter off because it's still going to be low and it will just sound weird because oh, it's I'm like two there. filters mixed together. So make sure you turn it off before you go to the next tab if you don't want the mix. If you want the mix, then obviously keep it on. But voice characters, Jessie, what's she saying? You probably recognize some of these names if you've done this on TikTok before because some of them are the same the longer the clip the longer it takes to uh yeah to convert it i guess is the oh word. and there's an ai voice assistant which at the moment i have turned off because it's just not yeah there you go uh you see what i mean this is where it gets really 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 cool speech to song so all of these are pro apart from one which is folk Let's see what it does. Well, you know what it's going to do. It's going to change the audio of me speaking into a song. Now, you can see at the top here, it's saying waiting to apply, and then it's showing you how long it's going to take. So again, the longer the clip, the longer it takes, but it's doing a pretty fast job, so let it do its thing. And as you can see, we're done. Oh, and there's an AI voice assistant, which at the moment I have turned off because it's just not good. But big things that are coming. I'll go through the whole AI assistant. I think we'll turn that off. Speech to song. It's pretty cool though. Pretty cool. Right. That's that for the audio. Next along is speed. So this is just going to change the speed of the clip. So if you go, uh, well, if I change it and show you, so let's obviously speed it up and we play it. You can see it sounds like a mouse. If you wanted to speed it up and it not sound so much like a mouse, then make sure you don't take the slider above this third marker, because when it's below the third marker, you can see you've got the option to mess around with the pitch as in like keep it slightly normal. So if I turn it off, you can see now it sounds with like my voice just sped up. If I turn the spitch, uh, spitch, if I turn the pitch on, it sounds like a mouse. Yeah, you get it. Speed. It's just, yeah, there if you need to speed or slow things down. Uh, and then you have the option to like do some speed ramping effects if you want. So let's say you want it to start slow and then go fast and then go slow. I don't know why that went high. I guess it goes high. Okay, let me show you. Here you go. Right, so this is going to start slow. Um, and then but yeah, low. you've got this, unless it's not good, but big, I'll go um, but Yeah, cool. Turn that off. Animation, next tab along. How do you want it to come in? How do you want it to go out? So simply choose the animation you want and you don't need to drag it down, just press on it. So let's say we wanted it like that. There you go, that's how it's gonna appear. And like with anything, as soon as you press on it, a slider appears. So you can change the, the, the duration. Uh, now you can see very, very slightly on the actual clip, it's created this, uh like white line here at the beginning it's very very small i don't know why they make it so small uh, uh, that's just showing you that it's on the timeline and if we increase the duration that white line will get bigger oh, there's an AI voice see what i mean uh and then same works without uh, like yeah just select how you want it to go out there we go whirl it out and yeah but like i said you don't need to drag anything you just click on it and you know let it do its thing and let's take them off and go to combo so combo is what it's going to do whilst it's on the screen. So essentially it's going to last like the whole length of whilst we're playing it on the clip by default at the moment. You can see it's moving, but you can mess around with this slider as well and, and change how you want it to. Yeah. How do you want the duration to be as well? Like, like any of this, it's all cust customizable. I thought I was thinking my head customizable is not a word, but then I realized I think it is a word. If there's all the words that I've said today that aren't words, customizable is a word. So you can, it is customizable wherever you see a slider. For now, we'll turn it off. That's animation. Adjustment, right. So obviously, this clip's looking very white because it was a very, very overcast day and yeah, things were a little bit overexposed and the coloring's not obviously the best. Here is where you can make some color adjustments. Uh, you've got various different tabs. Um, if you wanted to import a LUT, by the way, at the moment I don't have any imported, so that's why it's saying none, but you can't import a LUT here. You need to go over to your elements tab and you see where it says adjustment, go to adjustment and you can see LUT and you import a LUT, find it on your computer, and then 
once you've imported it, it will appear on the drop down uh, menu here and you can select it and then bam, add it to your clip. But let's go down to the basic stuff. So yeah, anything you would expect to be on your color adjustments like is here, you know, you can mess around with the temperature. So yeah, if you want to make things like colder or warmer, uh, the tint, the saturation. So probably want to bring it up. I mean, it's, it's, it's I just, yeah, I should have maybe taken the, <laughs> I should have maybe taken the lipstick off, but I haven't. Uh, we definitely don't want to turn the exposure up. Uh, so probably want to bring it down a little bit. Um, but yeah, like anything you would expect there to be with the color adjustments is here. Sharpening. Um, yeah. Highlights shadows all that stuff you've even got like hue and saturation stuff as well to play around with and if that wasn't enough you can mess around with the curves as well uh you do have color wheels but it is a pro feature so yeah you can still do the basic stuff without the color wheels but yeah pretty cool and anything you make any adjustments you make here if you've got let's say i don't know 10 clips on the timeline and you know you want all of them to look like this you can literally go to apply to all and it will apply all of the color adjustments you've made to all of the clips on the timeline or you could save it as a preset uh to use in future by saving it as a preset and then to to uh, find that preset and to use that preset, just go to adjustments up here again, and you can see you've got presets here. So it will save to here, wherever, whatever you save will save to here. And you can then literally drag the preset down as a layer. And you can see that now anything below that adjustment layer will have that effect, whatever effect you've adjusted uh, in the preset. For you to use in future projects and that is adjustment and that's not it because you can see wherever there's arrows there's more so there's one more thing up here which is ai stylize uh, and actually you can't do anything with video clips with this it's all grayed out look it doesn't let you use it uh it's oh this only works on still images at the moment so if we go back up to our media bit and where's that th the, the image we exported earlier here if i drag that down and now we click on that and we go to the ai stylus you can see you've got other options this is a pro feature it works the same as what we did earlier where you can type in a prompt and it will create like an image but if we go back down to this one you can see now they're not grayed out so yeah you can again just have fun with this stuff so let's say we i don't know went to face swap and we went to baby face and we changed me to baby face let's see what happens oh right so yeah sometimes the effects are good sometimes they are not good and you just have to press undo but yeah it's there if you want it ai stylized but it doesn't work with video clips only still images right so anywhere in the adjustments panel that you see these little diamonds these little diamonds are magic diamonds they're magic keyframes and essentially what these little diamonds do is allow you to create a let's say like transition in between each keyframe of the adjustment you want so for example let's say for this clip i wanted it to slowly zoom into my new makeup and show off my new lipstick right i get my marker on the timeline uh, and then i would go up to the scale adjustment and i'd press add keyframe so you can see now it's added a keyframe to the clip if i then scrub along to at this point in the clip where I want the zoom to finish. So where you set the marker on the second point is where the uh, adjustment that you're adjusting is gonna finish adjusting. So in this case, it's the zoom. So this is where the zoom is gonna finish zooming. Yeah, does that make sense? You'll see. Now we come up to the scale and we are gonna zoom in to where we want it to zoom into, which is the lipstick and then I let go, you can see a new keyframe has been added to the timeline. So we've now got two keyframes in and out, and we've created an adjustment in between those two keyframes, which now when we play the clip, you can see in between the two keyframes, it's doing what I asked it to do, which was zoom in to my lips. 
And you can see the zoom stops at this keyframe because that's the end of it. If I wanted to, let's say, move the keyframe because I wanted the zoom to be longer, I can. I can just slide it along. See? And then now when I play it, it takes longer because I've obviously spread the keyframes out like even more. With this, you can right click and if you go down here, you can see show keyframe animation. It just brings up like a different panel for you to yeah see. Yeah, and if you actually go up here, you can see it in like a wave format and whatever. Yeah, you can mess around. It's like anything customizable, but if you didn't want that, you can hide it and it just appears as normal keyframes on the clip. And this can be done for any adjustment, literally any adjustment where you see the magic diamond next to it. The magic diamond is a keyframe. If you want something to change and adjust over time over the clip, for example, then you want to add the keyframes to make the adjustment between those keyframes. Keyframes, said a lot of keyframes. Keyframes, diamonds, keyframes, diamonds. Right, are you still with me? I hope you are. You'll be pleased to know. This is the last segment. We're nearly there. So we're gonna go back up to the elements panel, like I said at the beginning, and just go through like the other elements that are included and you can use. Right, we've done our basic import from device and the stock materials of the uh, images and videos. So we're gonna move over to audio and here you've got the option to go through the various different categories of music. You can search for certain music if you want. And as you go through the different categories, you can favorite whatever it is you want, which will appear in your favorites. So yeah, in future projects, you don't have to scroll through everything. If you kind of use the same music, it will appear there and make it easier. Be careful with the music though, because obviously if you're uploading to YouTube, yeah, all the copyright stuff, just yeah, double check and be careful. Uh, and then sound effects, again, work in the same way. You can go through the various different categories uh, and favorite whatever it is you want, or you can search for certain sound effects. So here you can see I've done some searches. So for example, let's choose this explosion. Once it appears and you like the look of something, just press on it. And oh, maybe make sure the volume is not as loud. Uh, and then yeah, it will just preview it for you. If you want to send it to the timeline, drag it down or press the little plus button in the top, in the bottom right. Uh, no, it's not even the bottom, it's the middle. In the middle, in the middle right. And once it appears in the timeline as a layer, our adjustment panel reappears. And you basically have the same audio adjustments as you did when you have a video on the timeline and we went to the audio tab with the volume, the fade in and out, the noise reduction, the channels and the voice changer, the speed, all of that stuff. It's basically the same as we went through earlier. Um, yeah, that is audio. Um, one thing that's really cool with audio is you can do the reverse of what I showed you earlier. When you have a clip on the timeline and we extracted the audio and then moved the audio around, you essentially could just import the audio from a video. So instead of importing the video, it just will import the audio. Let me show you. Go to import, choose whatever it is you want in terms of a video file. And then look, it just imports literally the audio for you to use. So there's no video. Pretty cool. Next tab along is text, which you've seen me use a couple of times for the video so far. So if you just choose to the text and just send it down. Once you send it down, your adjustments panel obviously will open. You can change the text to whatever it is you want. At the moment, we're obviously on the basic tab. Uh, so you can make your basic adjustments, um, change the color. Oh, I don't like yellow, change the color there, make it bold. Uh, if it was lowercase, you could change it to uppercase or vice versa, uh, change the alignment. You've got various different styles to choose from. Um, yeah, again, it's very, very endless. Blend mode, stroke, you can change the stroke color. Let's change it to blue, change the thickness of it. Uh, you can add a background if you want. Uh, so let's change the color so you can see, see what I mean? So it adds a background to it, which you can then make curved if you want, like rounded, uh, change the height of it. Uh, yeah, let's go down further. You can add a glow. Oh, glow is a pro effect. Let's choose this one, intensity. So you get a slight glow on the free effect, slight, slight one, slight, slight one. You can add a shadow. There you go. Uh, curve is not available when we have background on. So if we turn background off and we go down to curve, there you go. Look at that. Actually, I quite like it like that. I think we'll keep it like that. Maybe we'll scale it a bit down so it fits the screen. 
There you go. And there is your basic text. The next sub tab along is bubble. So this is just going to change the style of it. If you want, um, just click on it and it, yeah, will change it. But I don't like that. So we'll change it back. And effects, again, yeah, just loads to choose from. Maybe we'll keep it at that. The next tab along is animation, which, by the way, before I forget, any adjustments made on this, you can save as a preset uh, like you did, like you could do earlier or if you want to reset it. But yeah, you can save it as a preset down here, which, again, if you use the same stuff throughout your videos, will save time so you don't have to keep making adjustments to each of the text. Right, animation, in and out. How do you want it to come in? How do you want it to go out? So let's say we wanted it to come in like a typewriter. Just press on it and look at that. It comes in like a typewriter. And of course, any animation you add, you've got your slider to change the durations. If you wanted to make it longer, there you go. That's a bit better. And if we then go to out, we can make the same effect out. I was going to say we can make the same effect come in, but it's actually going out. So we can make the same effect go out. So find typewriter, uh, typewriter, which actually, funnily enough, the typewriter for out is a pro feature, right? Pro element. I oh, know it's not. We've got one here. There we go. Right. Ignore me. That must be a different typewriter. There you go. Typewriter is free. Ignore what I said. Anyway, sliders down here to adjust it. Like I said, if we undo all of that and get rid of it and we go to loop, what this is going to do is it's just going to essentially, whilst the text is on the screen, it's just going to animate it for the whole duration it's on the screen. So maybe that's not the best example. There we go. Flash. So it's just looping an effect, which again, you can change the speed. So let's Turn it down. There we go. So it's flashing a bit more. So throughout the whole time the text is on the screen, this is the effect that will be on. Right. Let's undo that so it's back to normal. Next tab along is tracking. Now, this is pretty cool. Let's get a, uh, let's get a clip of me back on the screen. There we go. And there's the text there. Let's make the text a little bit more smaller. And let's put it over my face. Now, obviously, this is a stupid, maybe, well, maybe a stupid example, but uh, just so you kind of get the idea. So tracking, let's go back to it. So essentially what this is going to do is I can set the text to track onto, let's say, my face. I don't know why I would want to do this in this example, but we are in this example. So simply go to motion tracking. You see a yellow box appears. Let's put the yellow box on my forehead. And then if we actually bring this down, because the longer the clip, the longer it takes to do it. And obviously we don't want to be here for days. So I think, oh no. Yeah, let's make it five seconds. You'll get the idea with that. So let's go back to uh, the text and go back to tracking. And then here at the bottom, you can see it says start. Just press start. Let it do its thing. And what it's going to do, essentially, exactly what it says on the tin, it's going to track whatever it is you've selected. And yeah, so if you were doing like a product review of something and you were holding up, let's say this cup, mug, no, this mug, and you had text attached to it, as you moved it around, like the name of the cup, it would follow it. Is that a good example? Yeah. Right, now when we play it, like a bit uh, look at that. The and text is stuck. It's stuck to my face wherever I go. Now, if there's one effect that makes things laggy from the experience I've had using CapCut is this tracking. I don't know if you can see when I play it. If you see the player like word up here, can you see? It goes yellow. Sometimes it goes red. And that's showing that things are just not as playing as smoothly. Uh, and actually, it did say that frames are dropping. See, if you hover over it, there are dropped frames. It's because, yeah, it's 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 needing a lot to process the stuff. And this is where it might help if if you went to change it to best performance and even maybe turn the proxy editing on as well. But But this is actually the only effect that I've come into it where it starts to make the computer lag a bit, which is actually pretty cool because in Premiere Pro, which is my main video editing software, usually, uh, oh, mate, it's, it's, actually, you know what? Let's not go there. But yeah, so 
if it does start to lag when you play it back, and I guess the more you have got going on and the longer the clip, it's going to lag a bit more. This is a very short five second example. But yeah, if it starts to lag, which it might do in your situation, or it might not, if you've got a powerful computer, then yeah, just change it, change the settings like I showed you earlier. Uh, but yeah, that's tracking. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, let's turn that off. Uh, next along, we've got text to speech. Okay, so this is essentially going to speak whatever it is you've got as the text. So let's actually create another layer for this and move this over here and write some actual text. So welcome to my YouTube channel. Oh, channel. Right. So now if we go over to text to speech and we choose Santa. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Oh. Oh, ho, ho. YouTube. It said YouTube. Welcome to my YouTube. Not YouTube. Welcome to my YouTube. Let's see Santa too. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Oh, it's not saying YouTube properly. Elfie, can you do a good Welcome job? Welcome to my YouTube channel. YouTube. It's saying YouTube. Welcome to my YouTube. It's not YouTube, it's YouTube. Jesse? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Nah, YouTube. It's saying YouTube. Anyway, you get the idea. If you wanted to use Jesse as your final person, even though she says YouTube as YouTube, <laughs> you can press start recording and what it would do is it would send it down to the timeline as a uh, audio layer. See, there you go. Welcome to my YouTube channel. YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Right. Do you want to see something else even more cooler than that? Get, uh, click on your text layer. Go to text to speech, and custom voices. So this is going to allow you to clone your voice. You can see I've already messed around with it, uh, but we're going to do it here so you can see how to do it. Right, let's click on that. What you need to do is you need to literally read the paragraph it puts in front of you and press uh, start recording. So let's do this. Custom voice technology is revolutionizing the way we interact, enabling us to create lifelike audio narratives and engage in immersive conversations. Stop, let it do its thing and create the voice which actually, surprisingly, like all of this stuff, doesn't take too long. Um, I've said that and it's going to take long, isn't it? No, it's speeding up. Okay, let's just wait. Oh, there we go. Didn't even go past 38. Right. So to listen to your cloned voice, just press on. This is your cloned voice. Hope you like it. Yeah. It's not really... This is your cloned voice. Hope you like it. It's a good idea and it's very cool. I don't think it's there yet though. This is your cloned voice. Hope you like it. I don't think it sounds like me. I don't think it sounds like me. This is your cloned voice. Hope you like it. That's good. So it essentially converts the voice into... So you can listen to it in another language, in this case, Chinese. That bit is cool, though. That bit, the translation bit is cool. I mean, it's all cool, but it just doesn't sound like me. But if you do like it and you think it sounds like you, then you can name it and save it. And then like you can see over here, we'll discard that. Like you can see over here, I've done a couple already. Um, you would just do the same thing. Select it. Welcome to my YouTube yeah, that doesn't sound like me either. But anyway, one if you like, just press start recording like we did with Jesse and it will then send it as an audio uh, track to the timeline. I think give it a little while. Welcome to... And it will be better. But I mean, it's it's good. That's, like, it's a free feature. Uh, remember, let's remember it's a free feature to use. And again, like at the top, you've got various different like other tabs, but you can go through. Obviously, we're not going to go through each and every one uh, now. But yeah, this is it all works the same way. Text to speech. Oh, and look, there's an arrow, which means there's more. There's one more thing, which again, you know what I'm about to say. This is pretty cool. AI characters. OK, so let's say you didn't want to appear in the shot of your video, uh, but you wanted someone to appear. Choose your character. So let's choose a character. Who should we choose? Let's choose Pedro. Right. So simply click on Pedro. 
press add. Welcome to my YouTube channel. That's not it. Let it do it. I should I should have waited. I should you know what? Wait to see it do its thing because it's not just a still image. Don't worry. It's not just a still image. It's an it's applying it. It's applying it. Wait, wait. Right. Are you ready? Let's play this. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Mate. Welcome to my YouTube channel. The lips are so, it's like in time. It's so perfect. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <sighs> That's so, so sick. If you click on Pedro's layer, you can adjust Pedro. Let's scale him up. I want you to look at the lips. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my YouTube channel. That's so good. Okay, I'll stop. It's so good. Uh, you could, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And obviously we're on the, the, the Pedro's panel now, which has brought up various other adjustments, which are very similar to the video adjustments uh, that I showed you earlier. But you could go onto the character settings and you could change the framing and stuff like that with the appearance. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all pretty much the same with it. You can add... Yeah, you can add the voice stuff. Yeah, it's, it's all pretty much the same here. So we haven't missed anything there. But AI characters. This is probably my favorite thing. One of my, no, probably my favorite thing. Because if you had a whole segment that you didn't want to appear in on camera, you could get Pedro or one of the other characters to do it for you. I mean, it's, it's obviously you can tell it's not, Welcome to my YouTube. Yeah, you can. I mean, he's very over exaggerated. You can tell it's not being recorded, you know, properly, and it. But could you tell it's AI generated? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, maybe you could. Maybe you could. And of course, you know, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. At the moment, this is just really basic. What I'm showing you with the text, obviously behind him, and it's a black background. But remember, with the whole canvas thing and whatever, you could put whatever you want behind him. So you could, you know, change the background to a pattern like we had earlier, and or put, you know, I don't know, a moving stock video behind him, you know, to look like he's walking or whatever. Like, again, it's just endless with how you can edit it and create it. But yeah, that is that. Right. Where were we? Uh, no, that's it. That brings us to the end of the text. That's AI characters. And what a way to finish with the text. Fantastic. So if we go back over to the elements panel, you can see that you've got presets. If you save stuff as presets, it will appear here. And then you've got more AI fun, AI generated. So what this is going to do is it's going to generate text based on a prompt, same as kind of what we did earlier with the images. So just put in the text you want. So let's put in James and then you can put, how do we want James to look? Fireworks. I just realized, did I do fire? I did the example of fireworks earlier, didn't I? Now with this, uh, you can't do the steps like we did earlier. There's no none of that. You can just change the font. So we'll keep it as it is for now. Press generate, let it do its thing. And it essentially is going to give you the word as you've asked it to with the prompt fireworks. Oh, there we go. Right. Okay. So click on that. Welcome to my there we go. Channel. And then it appears there. Right. And then oh, what you can do is press the plus button, send it to the timeline. Let's move it along. And there we go. Let's increase it so you can see. That's what it's done. Look at that. It's just... Yeah. Again, like, this is just... Mm. AI generated text. You can see what you can do with it. And if all of it, you see, I've had fun already with it, with my name. Uh, anything you do in this project, you can, yeah, access in other projects as well. You've got various different effects to flick through. There's also text templates as well. Yeah, obviously we're not going to go through each and every one of them, but yeah, that's, that's how you would create your basic text and your adjustments to it. Right, underneath that, you've got auto captions. So let's remove this and go back to our video layer. Let's say we wanted captions to appear on screen as we're speaking. This is how you're gonna do it. Go to auto captions, choose the language and press generate. Let it do its thing and it will literally generate captions for you, which, are get, which again are customizable. Like, look, there you go. So 
Sounds like a little bit of me. And now I'm literally filming my... There you go. You get the idea. They come up at the bottom as that. But when you click on the adjustments, sorry, when you click on the captions layer, you get your adjustments that appear here, which again, you can then make your adjustments, but make sure you have apply to all selected. So whenever you change anything, it applies to all of the captions. If you didn't want that to be the case because you maybe wanted to switch the colors up or whatever, then obviously don't. But, you know, for the size and stuff like that, you know, this is probably going to be the way to go by having apply to all uh, selected. So it's obviously, you know, on there. But yeah, auto captions and look how fast it did it. I know it's only a five second clip, but even when I've tried it at like a minute clip, it's really, really fast with it auto captions. Right. Next along, we've got stickers. Uh, and again, this works the same way as all the other media. You can just search for whatever stickers you want. And again, it's just like, this is included. Like, obviously there's some pro stuff, but so much of this is included. Like you've got an emoji section, you've got icons, you've got call outs, like it's all here for you to use. And if you like what you see, favorite it or press the plus button and it will send it to the timeline and they're animated. They're animated. Look, it's moving, uh, which is pretty cool. Stickers. Um, with the AI generated stickers, uh, you can see I've generated some already. So these, this, this is what I would call a sticker. Remember earlier in the actual other import thing, we went to AI generated, it said it was a sticker here, describe your sticker. That's why I was getting confused because this is a sticker. So you can see I've, I've literally typed in plane on runway on my previous one and it gave me not a plane on runway, just a plane. Uh, but yeah, that, that's pretty cool that you can just literally type in anything and it will, yeah, give you what you asked for. Uh, but the sticker that you create isn't animated like some of the other stickers in the sticker library. Uh, it's just a still sticker. Oh, it's getting a bit hectic on here, isn't it? Should we delete some of this stuff? And then you can add some brand stickers as well, um, which I don't have any in the spaces at the moment. Right, effects. You've got various different effects to choose from uh, with body effects. So for example, if we make, if we go down here to, you know what, let's delete some of this, getting a bit messy on here. Right, so let's select this effect, drag it down. Oh, look at that. Look at that don't want two of them look at that yeah you get the idea of it but again got a bit of an echo like yeah you could just spend so long going through all of them and if we go to the video effects all of the different categories yeah you could do some searching it's just endless the whole thing is cool the whole thing is endless and you can have so much fun favorite what you want come back to it later transitions let's get two clips on the timeline and you can see how these work so transitions so let's say we wanted um i don't know what do we want a glitch let's go for a classic glitch we're going to get our glitch and we're going to drag it down here in between the two clips that we want to glitch uh, sorry, Pedro, we are going to delete you now. You're getting in the way. So now when we play the clip, you can see that that's the transition between. If you think it's too fast or too slow, you can increase it by just moving the in and out points there. And you can see when you select it, your adjustments panel over here is the same thing, just with the duration. Um, and then we move over to filters, which does exactly what it says on the tin is your filters. So let's say we wanted this one over here. That's going to add like a ghosty effect to it. And again, when you click on the layer, uh, it gives you whatever adjustments it gives you, which in this case is just intensity. And I just remembered, did we check the adjustments for the stickers and stuff? It's pretty much the same stuff. So if we send this one back to the timeline, you can see the adjustments that come up is just the scaling, the positioning, the animation, and you also have the option to track it like we did with the text earlier. So let's say you wanted to have this track my face, which would probably be a better example than the text. So it's just an emoji face, not my face, then you could do the same thing there. I just remembered we didn't go over the adjustments panel with them, but it's all pretty much the same. Any layer that you select brings up a new adjustments panel, which some are 
you know, have one option, some have 10, some have 20, etc. So yeah, filters, this is how you're going to do it. And again, there's various categories for you to go through. Now adjustments, I kind of touched on this earlier. This is where you're going to be uh, making a custom adjustment layer or your presets that you save or LUTs that you upload are going to be uploaded to. So for the custom adjustment, you're going to send a custom adjustment layer down to the timeline. And then when you click on the custom adjustment, it literally brings up your color adjustment. So that's all that you're able to adjust with the color adjustments, the color adjustments, <laughs> you, the color adjustments. Um, now, the, the thing with it is, is I would personally just do your color adjustments and then save it as a preset. And then it appears in the preset, like I showed you earlier, but this is another way to do it if you wanted to as well, but it's only color adjustments that you can do. So let's say you made your color adjustments. I don't know. Let's bring the temperature down. Uh, you could then, yeah, uh, you could then expand the adjustment to the whole clip if you wanted to or whatever. But like I said, save your stuff as a preset and it will appear there, which might be easier. And last but not least, templates. You can create a video from, from any of the templates that are in here. And it's great. You can filter it by orientation. So if you were making a TikTok video, uh, you've seen all the templates, uh, you know, out there, uh, probably by now. Um, so they're here as well. Or if you wanted to create a landscape video, select that you could choose the limit of the clips. So what that means is if I delete everything on the timeline now, and let's quickly send one down, uh, I don't know what one should we send down? Let's do an intro. Um, let's send this down. So we're going to literally drag it down to the timeline. And once it's on the timeline and we click on it, you can see that over here on the adjustments, you're able to change the wording. So this is an intro to a YouTube channel. So you can put in your own, obviously, things uh, as you want. If we get a, uh, let's get one that has clips. So for example, if we get send let's send this one down what you can see is here this has three clips in it to be replaced so simply click on three clips and you can see it shows you the duration that the clips are going to be shown across the video for you're just going to click on replace locate on your computer the clips that you want it will add it to these sections and then when you play the template back it plays with your clips on it Say it's the same way if you've edited it, edited it through a template on TikTok. It's literally the same uh, on CapCut for TikTok on the on the mobile app. It's literally the same as that where you're going to replace the clips. And again, you that's what clips is. You can set it to no limit or if you want it to only ever show you, you know, templates that have like three to five clips, then you can yeah filter it by that. But yeah, that's templates for you. And again, you're just going to need some time to go through them and see if there's any out there that you want to use. Because yeah, some of them are just fun to watch, probably not use, whereas some of them are going to be yeah ones that you actually want to use. And there you have it. We made it. Did you make it? Did you make it? If you've made it, then bravo, bravo. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I've tried to cover all of the main bits and pieces, but of course, if there's anything that I've missed or you have any questions, then let's hang out in the comments below. Uh, and you know what? That's, that's pretty much it. It's literally over to you to go and have some fun.